Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we are revisiting the Black, Green, Insidious Roots deck, which got a very important upgrade in Bloomborough with the Osteomancer Adept. A 2-mana 2-2 two -two Squirrel Warlock with Death Touch can tap, saying until end of turn we may cast creature spells from our graveyard by foraging, in addition to paying their author costs. And foraging means we have to either have sacrificed food or exiled three cards from a graveyard. And since we're not making too many food tokens in this deck, it's the most going to be exiling three cards from our graveyard and then if we cast a spell this way that creature will enter the battlefield with a finality counter on it so once it's destroyed it will be exiled for good. So the Osteomancer is how we potentially combo off in one big turn once we assemble Insidious Roots with Tyvar. So if you don't know this combo, Insidious Roots a two-mana enchantment, saying creature tokens we control can tap to make one mana of any color, and we can generate plant tokens with Insidious Roots whenever one or more creature cards leave our graveyard. We get to make an 0-1 plant token and add a plus one plus one counter on each plant we control. So the more plants we make, the bigger they get. And then we've got Tyvar, saying we may activate abilities of creatures we control as though those creatures had haste, meaning we can potentially tap a plant for mana the same turn we generated it, whereas normally it would have summoning sickness, so it can't immediately tap for mana. And Tyvar also allows us to immediately activate the Osteomancer Adapt after putting it on the battlefield alongside Tyvar, or maybe getting it back out of the graveyard with Tyvar using the minus two ability, where we get to mill three cards and then return a creature card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battle field and our deck is filled to the brim with those one and two mana creatures can also plus one to untap up to one target creature useful if we maybe need to untap an additional plant to make an additional mana so if we have tyvar osteomancer and insidious roots in play all we really need is enough cards in graveyard to keep comboing and to make sure we can keep filling the graveyard we've got four copies of the snarling a gorehound a one one with menace saying whenever another creature we control with power two or less enters we get to surveil one so we can just always put all the cards in our graveyard with the surveil trigger which means that if we activate the osteomancer adept getting back a creature and while paying for the forage cost exile another creature from our graveyard which also triggers the insidious roots we now get to make two plant tokens for each creature we return triggering the gorehound twice surveilling twice and then by getting back the creature we get another surveil trigger so that means at least three cards ending up in the graveyard which can pay for another forage ability on the Osteomancer Adept, so it essentially pays for itself. We get to make two plant tokens with each iteration of the loop, and we get to grow all the plants in play, so we'll assemble this huge army of creatures. Plus, if we're worried about our opponent having some sweepers in hand, we'll eventually get back Deep Cavern Bat from the graveyard as well, which can take away all the opponent's sweepers, since we can play all four copies of Deep Cavern Bat out of the graveyard, and then unless our opponent were to top deck a sweeper, we should have it covered on the following turn, or we might even have some plant tokens that can immediately attack for the win. I've also come across some versions of this deck playing the Voldaren Thrill Seeker, which could maybe sacrifice a large enough plant token to immediately win the game on the spot without needing to attack, although splashing red is awkward since we won't be able to play the Thrill Seeker from hand unless we get the plant tokens from Insidious Roots, so it could be kind of stranded in hand for a while since we don't have a way of discarding it from hand, so I've uh, found it not to be super necessary. And then rounding out the deck, we've got more ways to fill the graveyard through Surveil with the Maverick, which can also be exiled from our graveyard to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature. So that way we can also potentially trigger the Insidious Roots. If we don't have the whole combo going, we can still maybe generate some plant tokens by having the Maverick leave our graveyard, similar to Icker Drinker, a 1-1 lifelink that we can exile from our graveyard to incubate two. And then we've got the full set of Annoying Vermin, a good blocker against Rad Aggro if they're not flying over it. And then then can also mill two cards when it enters so we can keep filling the graveyard and then if we get it back with the osteomancer it also essentially pays for itself and even adds a few more cards to the graveyard so we can keep uh, going through it and then a two copies of haywire might mostly to deal with opposing copies of temporary lockdown could also be more of a sideboard card but i've seen enough artifacts and enchantments in best of one so that i don't mind a few copies in the main deck and then a cash grab to round things out can mill four cards and then return a permanent from among those into our hands if if we control a squirrel or a returned a squirrel like the osteomancer we also get to make a food token which can maybe gain us more life could also use it to forage technically but usually we have enough stuff in graveyard that it's not really
really necessary. And this can also be a way to trigger Insidious Roots if we get back a creature from the graveyard. So that's another neat interaction. And this is a great way for us to find our Insidious Roots and Tyvar, which we cannot get back with Osteomancer, whereas we can get back our other creatures pretty easily. And then a mana base has lots of black green dual lands, Blooming Marsh, Line or Waste, and then trying out two copies of Rustless Cottage, which is technically also a way to trigger Insidious Roots if this attacks and exiles a creature from our own graveyard, and can also be nice against more controlling decks as a 4-4 to start pressuring them, and then the Mortuary to Surveil can also help fill the graveyard, and then uh, plenty of basics. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, we have what looks like a Keeper, still missing Roots and Tyvar, but we've got some other decent combo pieces. Start with Gorehound. Opponent on a frog deck, alright. Could technically still be green-white rabbits as well. For now we'll play the Osteomancer. And another Gorehound's not a bad draw. One of the few non-Tyvar, non-Roots cards I would keep on top. So we could be okay trading the Osteomancer for Mightcaller. And opponent does indeed look to be a rabbit deck. Yeah, the Might Caller is only going to get bigger. And we've got another Osteomancer, so I don't need to keep both. And then we can keep looking for Tyvar and Roots. Play Osteomancer. Surveil one twice. And there's the Roots. So now we're just missing Tyvar to hopefully combo off. Playing Roots before Cash Grab can also give us an extra plant. Bone's got the Evangelist to make a bat. Okay. Recruit attacks. I'll take it for now. And then I'm not really interested in attacking. So if we get extremely lucky, we could already combo next turn if we hit an untapped land and Tyvar. But more realistically, try and combo over the course of two turns. If we cash grab back a creature, it would also make a plan to trigger Gorehound to keep digging. Alright, so second Evangelist means the battle cry is going to start adding up. Although I still don't really want to trade right now, means I take 7 down to 10. Next turn the bats alone are attacking for 6 in the air. So yeah, it's going to be close, but uh, I think I'm still better off waiting. Take my turn, find a Maverick. So step 1 has to be cash grab. And we did find Tyvar. And then we can play Maverick. As opposed to activate Osteomancer to get back Osteomancer. I guess that's maybe still better. Since that would trigger Insidious Roots. If I did have another creature in Graveyard, by exiling it we would trigger Roots an additional time. But we'll have to settle for just one plant, Maverick can certainly go. And another Tyvar I don't think I need to keep. And then a Forest can go. Finding another Insidious Roots would maybe help combo off even more. I guess the problem is the Flyers might kill us despite comboing off, but we do have Deep Cavern Bat as well, which can give us a blocker. So I'm okay trading off the uh, second Osteomancer. Warren Warleader can pump the team, so now the Bats are attacking for four each in the air. So yeah, I'm gonna have to chum block a whole bunch, which is not where we want it to be. So 13 evasive damage. Can soak up four, chump chump. So I'm forced to trade away both Gorehounds, which is going to make it really difficult to keep fueling the graveyard. 
but we are technically still alive. All right, step one, play Tyvar. Minus to get back a Gorehound, most likely. Or we can get back Deep Cavern Bats and then get back Gorehound with Osteomancer since it's cheaper. And we'll need those bats eventually. For now. Take their token maker. And then we want to keep comboing. Activate Osteomancer. Step one, get back Gorehound. And then I'm okay exiling one creature here potentially. Make it a vermin. So we trigger Insidious Roots twice. Once from... The vermin leaving, and once from the gorehound leaving. And then get back another gorehound. Now we'll get to surveil. And just want to fill the graveyard as much as possible. And find more flying creatures or life linkers. So, get back Maverick as a creature. And we're just putting everything in graveyard at this point. Get back Maverick as a creature. And finding more deep cavern bands is going to be pretty important for us to survive. Play the bats. At least auto tapper is good about tapping our smaller creatures for us and leaving the bigger plants on defense. So that saves us a lot of time when comboing off. And another deep cavern bat, so. And now we've got pretty much our entire library in our graveyard, so I don't need to keep aggressively milling myself anymore. Leave some cards in my library in case the game lasts a few more turns. And we'll get back some more life linkers. Well, it's still pretty impressive that we managed to combo off after having to chum block with our entire board. So that really shows the power of this deck when it's going off. Alright, I think we're probably fine to pass it back now. Maybe get back one more creature. And our graveyard's empty anyway. Okay. We will have to chum block with the deep cavern bats. We also have a food token we can still sacrifice. And yeah, plenty of attackers to cross the finish line next turn. This is where, if we had maybe a one off Voldaren Thrill Seeker, 
we could uh, get it back and then immediately sacrifice some 20 powered plant token to close out the game. But of course there are drawbacks to including it in the deck. It's difficult to cast unless you're actually comboing off. So it can be kind of stranded in hand. Opponent found a Knight Errant. Don't think that's going to save them here. They can still attack, just in the hopes that we don't block with the Deep Cavern Bands. And uh, yeah, I can still sacrifice a food. So we just need to jump with one Deep Cavern Band. And an attack back should do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. A Gorehound into Cash Grab, looking for Insidious Roots. And then Tyvar to eventually combo off. We'll still need to find our Osteomancer at some point, most likely. And there it is. So if I play that first... We'll get a food token from Cash Grab. And we get to surveil in the meantime. Just filling the graveyard as much as possible. Can always get back the Mites with Tyvar or Osteomancer if we're up against red-white tokens. Where the Mite is at its best. But maybe just a mono-white tokens deck. Alright, in that case I actually don't mind Tyvar since we drew another one. So let us attack first. Possible opponent can make a 2-2 at instant speed from Virtue of Loyalty, and I don't really want to trade it for Osteomancer. Although I guess if it trades, we just get it back. That's going to be a Soul Partition instead. Could Cash Grab in response to get a food? Yeah, maybe that's okay. Tyvar right now doesn't do a whole lot, since our graveyard's not very full. And we found the Insidious Roots. I guess in hindsight I could have played a tap land. Good reason not to play our land right away. Alright, Demolition Field we don't really care about. Does seem like our opponent will have answers to Insidious Roots. So maybe we want to leverage Tyvar first. Or just replay the Osteomancer out of exile. Can also get one back from Graveyard to be fair. So let's try that. Attack with Gorehound. Play Tyvar, get back Osteomancer, Surveil, play a tapped Restless Cottage. And then next turn, by playing the Roots, I can maybe threaten to combo off. Opponent using Soul Partition on Tyvar now. That's okay. Can play both Tyvar and Roots next turn. So hopefully they just tap out. Opponent is blue-white, it seems. And Demolition Field on Cottage. That's okay by me. Their opponent will have one mana left to interact. Unlikely to be super relevant here. Maybe a Bound spell. Opponent's looking at our graveyard. Right, they are going to bounce the Osteomancer. does actually make it harder for me to combo off now. Although not impossible, since there's another Osteomancer in the graveyard to return with Tyvar. So... Tyvar minus. We'll make a plant. <laughs> this will be quick. Your story's not finished yet. The plant makes mana. Gorehound fills the graveyard. And we can activate Osteomancer right away thanks to Tyvar. And then we'll just start by getting back a one mana creature, another Gorehound first. And then we want to exile two non creatures and one creature, one we don't care about, like Vermin. So we trigger Insidious Roots twice. So now we actually get ahead on mana. 
So we can eventually cast Deep Cavern Bat to make sure our opponent doesn't have a board wipe in hand. So yeah, we should have it here. That was pretty awesome. So keep on surveilling for now. Until we find a couple Deep Cavern Bats, pretty much. Should have uh, exiled an extra creature there. Don't need more Insidious Roots, one's enough. And then can surveil one, but I think we'll probably put everything in Graveyard regardless. So yeah, make sure to exile a creature this time around. So he gets two plant tokens from Insidious Roots. And we're still looking for Deep Cavern Bats. But yeah, at this point I don't think we can fizzle out. So unless our opponent top decks a sweeper like Sunfall, we should be alright. And maybe should start planning for that possibility. But I still need to find the bat in the first place, so that's the priority. I right, found Deep Cavern Bat. How many cards do we have in Graveyard? Not too many. Yeah, I guess we'll keep Vermin on top. Cast the bat. And then see where we're at. Maybe look a little bit deeper for a second bat in case they have two sweepers. Uh, I'll keep a Tyvar, I guess. So what do you have, opponents? All right, just a Jace. I guess that can also mill me to death if I'm not careful. And then Soul Partition doesn't matter. Draw two doesn't matter. So take the Jace and then, yeah, I'm glad I checked out their hand first. So now we want to make sure we leave 16 cards in library so we don't die to another top deck Jace. And then we should have enough to just win next turn with an attack. Even if they soul partition my largest token, we have plenty. So, yeah. Can attack for one. And pass a turn. And hope they don't top deck a Sunfall. So what's it gonna be? Another Jace? Wow, so they get to mill me for 15 exactly. And then I'll draw my last card from my library. So, yeah, that was about as close as it gets. And attack. Wow, good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one, probably start by surveilling. We know we need to find Tyvar. Blooming Marsh as a second land, doesn't seem super needed. Opponent also blank a green. So could play the roots in case our opponent has a deep cavern band to take it away next turn. And the Restless Anchorage was unexpected. Okay, uh, this turn maybe go for a cash grab. And then if I get back a creature, I'll get a plant token as well, which can make mana. Could have also main phased it to play around removal on the roots. Heaped Harvest, I see. So maybe a five color domain deck. Just playing a lot of colors and Atraxa as their curve topper. So they will have some sweepers like Sunfall. Right, found Tyvar. Although I could also go for the Gorehound, which will trigger Roots and Gorehound still pretty important to keep fueling the graveyard. And then hope to find a second Tyvar along the way. Because getting back Tyvar now, what does that do for me? Can play it next turn getting back Gorehound. Yeah, I guess that's still good enough. And a land as well. So Tyvar. A minus. We'll get a Gorehound. This will be your story's not finished yet. Surveil. Another Gorehound's not bad, but 
At this point we're looking for an Osteomancer, and I can cash grab at instant speed to maybe find one. That way we also don't overextend into a board wipe, which they could have here. And a Cornucopia is fine. Opponent sacking the Harvest to keep ramping. So next turn we could see a Sweeper. And we could technically win the game already here, just by growing the one plant we have for maybe a second with a cash grab. And then making those large enough. Assuming we find an Osteomancer, which we did. Okay, so... Get a second plant. Opponent only has one mana available, and they cannot cast a one mana Leyline Binding to interact. So they should just be dead. Play Osteomancer. Activate it thanks to Tyvar, keep filling the graveyard. And then make these plants as large as possible. And then we want to exile two non-creatures and one creature to maximize the roots triggers. Deep Cavern Bank can also have a look in case they were holding a sweeper, but again, we should just be able to win right now. So let's get back a Maverick, which can keep surveilling. Haywire Might, also an answer to the Cornucopia. I guess I'm a little bit curious what our opponent's holding here, so we could get back the bat to satisfy my curiosity. Still have 25 cards remaining. And then also can't forget we can still activate Tyvar once again to untap a creature, so we can maybe untap an extra plant. If we happen to tap one that doesn't have summoning sickness. Even though we can tap them as if they didn't have summoning sickness with Tyvar to actually attack the opponent. They cannot have regular summoning sickness either. So Bat will have a look. And our opponent's got double Archangel and Atraxa as we suspected. So we already have 15 power with these plant tokens. Not going to take too long, but I kind of want to just take away all their cards. Yeah, that's the power of Insidious Roots plus Tyvar when everything lines up. A way to overpower even the most powerful late game deck in Atraxa Domain. So we have 19 power here. I can probably stop milling now. And that's 23. Take their last angel and attack. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a pretty good hand. Both in City's Roots and Tyvar. And then we're hoping to mill our Osteomancer and Gorehound. Facing Red Aggro, which is not a great matchup, unfortunately. The opponent's deck is just faster at presenting lethal, and uh, we don't have a ton of interaction for it. Vermin is a good blocker, as long as they're not flying over with a slick shot. And yeah, speak of the devil. So if I roots first and then cash grab gets back a creature, we can also trigger the roots. So I think that's the play here. I'm going to have to wait to play Tyvar until I'm ready to combo off, otherwise Tyvar is just going to die to an attack. Keep Vermin back in case they present some haste creature on the ground. Opponent plotting a second show-off. And a Demonic Ruckus, so 
yeah, this is kind of the nightmare scenario for us. Our opponent with lots of flying creatures and more evasion. So you ignore whatever we're doing. So we can cash grab. And I want to get back a creature here, make it Icker Drinker. Maybe the lifelink will help. So double slick shot show off, a free demonic ruckus, which means they can still cast all of their spells out of their hand. And yeah, that's likely gonna be 18 damage. Already up to 11. And a monstrous rage is gonna be good enough here. GG's. And there's a shock as well, so opponent had some damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keepable hand, mostly with the surveil from Maverick helping us find our missing combo pieces. Still not great, since we don't have Roots or Tyvar yet, but I'm hoping we'll find them. So, gotta say no to the bat. Put on blue-green, maybe a team or ramp deck? Nope. Poison. Alright, so maybe I should check out their hand with the bats while I can, or we could play Osteomancer just to uh, have a blocker for the Rock Priest so they don't get a free attack in. And then next turn I can go Maverick plus Bat. At least we won't be targeting the opponent's creatures to trigger Rock Priest. The fact that our opponent's blue-green could mean that they have Ivy in the deck as well to combo with the Rock Priest. Or uh, they might have some of the blue proliferate cards. Let's see what's up. Alright, so we do see... Serum Snare as a bounce spell, and then double Augury to proliferate. Augury not a problem if they can't deal the initial poison. Skrelv could also be problematic, but at least we have both black and green blockers. So I think we take the Serum Snare. And then we're prepared to block the Duelist. Maybe Cash Grab is worth keeping, since it digs a bit deeper for Roots and Tyvar. Can just trade Osteomancer for Duelist if they attack with it. If they try and give Pro Black with Skralf next turn, then I can still double block with the Mavericks. So let's start with Cash Grab. Could also technically use Osteomancer to get back a Deep Cavern Bats. We'll get a food token as well since we control a Squirrel. And not the best hit. Can go for Icker Drinker or a land. Maybe I prefer Icker Drinker in the graveyard so I can actually incubate. And then, yeah, getting back Deep Cavern Bat versus just casting an Osteomancer here. I'll just cast Osteomancer. And then Deep Cavern Bat is probably fine to attack. Alright, so we're kind of on empty, although we can still activate the Osteomancer to get back creatures next turn. Opponent's digging with Augury. But at least they're not proliferating any poison, so that's nice. Duelist attacks. Do they use Skralv? They do, presumably on black. But we can still double block with Maverick. One will die to first strike. And then a second one will trade. Opponent might have picked up a pump spell. It's gonna be the Ascent. Alright. So we lose both Mavericks. But next turn I can just get back both of them with the Osteomancer. While surveilling to keep filling the graveyard. So it's not a disaster. Now we did take a poison here. Thanks to the Rot Priest. So now they can start proliferating. And then Haywire Might cannot destroy Skrelv since it's a creature, 
but it is a colorless blocker for the Jawbone Duelist, so it's still pretty useful. So activate Osteomancer. Step one, maybe Maverick. And we found the Insidious Roots, so that's nice. Potentially an argument to not get more stuff back from the graveyard right now. Although Deep Cavern Bat to check out their hand is still pretty tempting to make sure we don't get uh, surprised again next turn. Alright, opponent's got another Skrelv. They currently cannot cast the Augury. So, yeah, since they already have a Skrelv in play, we may as well take the Augury here. I guess it's the alchemy version that's got two toughness, which would have been more useful in the face of a 1 1 double strike. So if our opponent goes for Skrull von Black, we can still double block with Haywire Might and Maverick. Same trick as last turn, basically. And the trade happens. And our opponent packs it in, yeah, next turn we get to play the Insidious Roots, and then we can use Osteomancer to generate some plant tokens as well. And then at some point if we find Tyvar we can completely go off. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, we are missing Roots, Osteomancer, we can maybe mill and get back with Tyvar. And then Gorehound would be helpful, but uh, I think it's still a keeper. Get to Surveil with the Maverick. Facing red-white could be the token control deck, which is not a great matchup, mostly because of uh, temporary lockdown. And uh, if we combo off, since we're not playing the version with Thrillseeker, our opponent could still Sunfall and get rid of all our plans. So we would have to combo off multiple times through a sweeper. But Haywire might, an answer to the lockdown at least. So for now, play a Drinker. And for opponents playing Virtue of Loyalty to make a 2-2 at instant speed, I'm okay with them ambushing me. And we don't want to play the Might if the goal is to blow up a temporary lockdown. We found Insidious Roots, so that's exciting. For now, can attack. Opponent might have a Lightning Helix for Tyvar, but we've got multiples, so it's not a disaster if they take it out here. Uh, but I could play the Insidious Roots first. Which seems worth it. They could also have a get lost to destroy it, I suppose. And yeah, that's what they have. Alright, so we'll need to look for another route. Could have been a reason to play Tyvar, since that could also maybe bait out a Get Lost. For now, kind of want to go exploring with the maps. They could remove my creature in response, then my turn's not very efficient. So maybe it is still Tyvar. And then at the very least we can get back a Vermin. And mill myself some more. Alright, Osteomancer, good to have in the graveyard. And our opponent did also have the Lightning Helix. They are stuck on two lanes, but that means they might have Lockdown in hand, still unable to cast it. Which is a reason to start sacking these map tokens. Normally better to grow the lifelinker, but Maverick is better if it ends up in the graveyard, if they remove it in response here with another helix. Or a Torsha Tower, that one's more painful since it exiles. 
Thank you. Maverick can go. And then, yeah, we want to try and surveil here. Milling is useful for Tyvar, but it doesn't help us find the Insidious Roots. Alright, now Gorehound's a bit more helpful, but uh, we'll go for Tyvar first. Opponent forced to Helix the Vermin. And could go for Gorehound, although Osteomancer is something I eventually want to get back as well. And then don't have any mana to cast creatures out of the graveyard. Another Torture Tower could be annoying. Opponent lets us untap. And now step one is probably to play the Gorehound. So we can actually start surveilling towards another Insidious Roots, because we have everything else we need. Then if I activate Osteomancer, I can get back another Gorehound. For now, I want to keep all my creatures in the graveyard. Once we have Insidious Roots, it's fine to exile one creature when paying for the Forage. And then get back Maverick, just as a creature. And I think I'll surveil one before surveil two, maybe. And we found the Insidious Roots. Deep Cavern Bats, also good to get back with Osteomancer, although there's a chance our opponent will cast a Lockdown next turn before we get a opportunity to have a look. And then... Tyvar can untap. So we can attack. You've got this. Still no third land. Opponent's got a discard to hand size, and yes, Sunfall is just stuck there. Well, now we can combo off with Insidious Roots and play Deep Cavern Bats to check out the opponent's hand. So we don't risk a lockdown, getting rid of everything. So now we're happy enough exiling a creature as well, since that'll trigger the roots an additional time. And we want to just fill the graveyard as much as possible, find more copies of Deep Cavern Bat to take away all possible interaction. And let's see what they're working with. Our opponent does not have Lockdown, but Double Brothers ends and a Lightning Helix. I guess we'll start by taking the Helix, which I'm surprised they didn't cast on Tyvar. And then we can pretty easily beat Brotherhood's End by making our plants large enough. But yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We're going to be able to grow these plants out of Brotherhood's End to range. And the triple caretaker's talent hand did not quite work out for them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We're looking for Tyvar. And maybe a Gorehound to also help fill the graveyard. But Tyvar can maybe get back a Gorehound if we mill one. And then I could play the Insidious Roots first. So if Cash Grab gets back a creature, we make a plant. I think that's reasonable. 
Still not sure what our opponent's playing. Red-white, maybe the control deck? Nope. Red-white, mouse aggro. Alright, so at least we can try and block on the ground here. So... Can still cash grab, can do it at instant speed for what it's worth. And then maybe play another Maverick out as well. So we can surveil and maybe look for Tyvar. Although I think cash grab first still makes sense because I would prefer to get back a creature with cash grab over Tyvar. But if the opportunity presents itself, of course, I will go for Tyvar. So yeah, if I saw a Tyvar with a surveil, it would have been awkward to keep it on top and then waste all this uh, self mill. So no plants, but uh, we did find the card we were looking for. Graveyard's getting nice and full. Could still use a Gorehound to make sure we can keep filling the graveyard. I'll uh, chump the Challenger. They might be able to give it Trample. Just don't want to take unnecessary damage. Oh no, destroy evil. That was unexpected. Destroying our enchantment before we got any value. But luckily we drew another one. So, yeah, hopefully they don't have another copy. So in City's Roots, can get back Maverick or Icker Drinker. Um, I guess we'll go for Maverick to get a plus one counter. And make a plant. And then next turn we're maybe in a position to combo off. As we see a Manifold Mouse with Offspring, so our points tapped out. Can give Challenger Double Strike and Trample. Monstrous Rage wouldn't be cast this turn. So I can just take it. Although putting Maverick in Graveyard would also be reasonable. Alright, so step one Tyvar. Maybe hope to get back a Gorehound. And we found one. And then we just want to fill the graveyard as much as possible. Play Osteomancer. Our token can tap instantly thanks to Tyvar's haste ability. And then activate Osteomancer. Get back a Gorehound. And then I'm okay exiling one creature here as well. A creature we maybe don't care about. Uh, since that will trigger... The Insidious Roots twice, once from the creature getting exiled for Forage, and then once again from the creature leaving the graveyard. So now we're starting to generate additional plants. And then uh, go for a Maverick. And then we can get back a bunch of Deep Cavern Bants as well. All right, so we get to see this new version of Insidious Roots combo in action. And yeah, the Osteomancer pushes his deck to a new level, making it a lot more consistent to just combo off in one turn, only requiring a single Roots and Tyvar, whereas the older versions often needed multiple Roots to really get going. So yeah, the deck's quite powerful, although in the best of one meta, it is still going to be weak to all those mono-red aggro decks that can present lethal on turn 3, especially the versions with the Cell Sword, since we don't have much instant speed removal and if we try to dilute a deck by including more instant speed removal then the combo is going to be a lot less consistent so it's a bit of a balancing act and right now the deck is very good at comboing once it assembles all those pieces but it's not so good at surviving the red aggro decks so this is not a great deck to rank up on the ladder in best of one may have a better chance in best of three although there you will also have to account for graveyard hate and other interaction out of the sideboard that can potentially disrupt the combo whereas in best of one you don't expect to face too much of it so that'll do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day